Do you agree that spleen C deficiency is being really prevalent in clinical practice? I've seen so many cases. Today, I wanted to talk about not only spleen C deficiency, but the causes, the consequences, what it could lead to, and of course, treatment with acupuncture points, herbal formulas, and foods. Welcome to AcuPro, a show dedicated to making Chinese medicine and acupuncture easy to grasp and fun to learn. Hi, I'm your host, Clara Cohen. I support practitioners and students like you in changing the world one patient at a time. My goal is to share my passion for TCM and empower you to achieve superior patient care. I love to showcase the amazing benefits of acupuncture because after all, acupuncture rocks! So first, let's go back to foundation. My favorite TCM teacher back in school used to say, if you don't understand something, go back to foundation to figure it out. The spleen function, according to TCM, is to be in charge of digestion, right? Specifically with the stomach. That's one of the things we're going to see in symptoms is loose stools or diarrhea, having issue with bloating, weak digestive system, and cravings that is going to be linked to that function. The second function is the spleen is in charge of holding the blood within the blood vessels. So when there is issues of heavy bleeding with abnormal heavy bleeding, like heavy menstruation bleeding, chronic nosebleed, chronic bleeding, rectal bleeding, that is accompanied with fatigue and a pale tongue and feeling exhausted, that is a spleen not holding the blood within the blood vessel, which is very different from excess heat which can also cause abnormal heavy bleeding, but that would have a different tongue, different pulse, and a lot of heat sign, right? The next function of the spleen is to also hold everything in place, raise chi, and keep the organs in place. So when there is prolapse or organs falling, like the uterus, the bladder, the rectum, the transverse colon, that would be a spleen chi sinking, which means the spleen chi is not strong enough to hold all the organs in place. There is also the fact that spleen is in charge of raising chi, specifically clear chi, clear yang to the head for clear thinking and not overthinking or foggy brain or worrying constantly, which is the unhealthy, imbalanced part of the spleen. The spleen is also in charge of water metabolism. And that is in conjunction with the lung, the kidney, and the sanjiao. So not by itself, but it's in charge of water metabolism. That's why when there's a lot of bloating, that could be leading or coming from spleen not being able to do its function. Also, when people have a puffy eyelid, because the upper eyelid is related to the spleen or corresponds to the spleen, that's also a spleen not being able to metabolize the water. Another function of the spleen is to produce blood. So producing blood, meaning for menstruation, for a good flow of blood, the spleen produces blood with nutrients, with good digestion, with good food, good nutrients. So when there is blood deficiency, we have to look at what is wrong with the spleen, what is wrong with diet, the digestive system, the absorption Option. So it really leads to the digestive system again, right? That's another function when there's been blood deficiency, which can come up with scanty menstruation or very light menstruation or amenorrhea for that matter, that can lead to dizziness and feeling fatigue and having many symptoms with paleness, pale face, pale nails, pale lips. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So just looking at the function of the spleen as a whole, so we know what to look for when we do treatment and for the consequences. I wanted to start by talking about the consequences of not treating spleen chi deficiency, what it can lead to, which is worse outcome, and then we'll look at the cause. The consequences: if spleen chi is in charge of all those functions and it is depleted, and we'll look at the cause in a minute then the consequences can be, first of all, could be spleen blood deficiency. Now we can have spleen chi deficiency and spleen blood deficiency because obviously if we don't have good spleen chi, we can't absorb nutrients. Or if we don't have a good diet, we're not able to produce blood. The second one is spleen not holding the blood, like we said, within the blood vessel. So if spleen is not doing that, then obviously we have abnormal bleeding. But that stem from spleen chi deficiency to start with. So when there is those 
other patterns that we see, we still have to address the spleen chi because it's usually at the root cause of everything, right? If there is also excess damp, excess phlegm in the body, that is also coming from the spleen chi not being able to transform the water. Then we have this excess damp, excess phlegm. So when there is excess damp specifically or phlegm, we want to look at the root cause coming back from the spleen chi deficiency. It can also lead to spleen yang deficiency. And with that, to kidney yang deficiency. So spleen, when we have, if you go back to foundation, we have prenatal chi and postnatal chi. Prenatal chi is what we were born with. It's really stored within the essence, which is the kidney function to store essence. After that, we have postnatal chi. And postnatal chi is going to be given to us by anything that we need in order to survive. Because we were given life with prenatal chi. Postnatal chi is when we have anything that's going to keep us alive, which is air. So when we breathe, which goes through the lung, the lung function allows us to breathe. If we can't breathe, we can't survive. Same thing with food and water. If we don't drink or eat for many weeks and months, and for drinking probably less than that, obviously, we are going to perish, right? So that's the things that we need postnatal chi is food and air. So spleen is in charge of one of those, which is the food, the nutrients, right? Absorbing nutrients, transforming it into energy so we can have energy for the body. We can have good spleen chi and we're not fatigued because that's another one. When there is spleen chi deficiency, we're very fatigued, right? Chi is young in nature, right? So when chi is starting to be deficient, the next stage would be young deficiency. Plus spleen loves warmth. It does not like cold. So the next step is it will get cold and it will lead to spleen yang deficiency. If there is spleen yang deficiency, it will affect the kidney because the kidneys are prenatal chi. It's what we were given. But if we're not protecting it with the other organs function, then kidney is going to be depleted. Often when there is kidney yang deficiency, underneath it, there is spleen yang deficiency. Underneath that, the spleen chi deficiency. See how it all goes back up there. We still have to treat the root cause, which is spleen chi deficiency. When there is spleen chi deficiency, it can also lead to lung chi deficiency. Why is that? So we talked about air and food were the two postnatal chi. Lung chi and spleen chi have this relationship about water metabolism as well. So if you look at people with asthma, what one thing they can do to improve their asthma is their diet, right? Because the digestive system, if it's able to not have too much mucus to create asthma attacks, so we have to avoid dairy and sugar and processed food. The food that we have will affect the lung. And second, in the five element, again, back to foundation, in the five element, earth generates metal. So earth is the mother of metal, which means earth is spleen and stomach. So spleen is the mother of lung, which means that spleen generates a healthy lung, which means that if we want to have a strong immune system, we need to start with food, the gut, and making sure that is strong and healing. So spleen chi deficiency affects a lot of our other patterns and a lot of our health. Because it's connected to our brain or clear thinking, it's connected to our aging system, to the kidney, with the postnatal versus prenatal chi, and it's affecting our breathing ability, it's affecting our fatigue, our energy in general, it's affecting blood. It is such a key component to treat when there is any other issues that may stem from it. One of the things that we always do in clinic is to figure out the root cause, specifically to help the patient understand how we're going to go about the treatment plan. Can we change the cause? Can we address the cause? Is it possible to either manage or remove the cause, right? Spleen chi deficiency, because it's so prevalent, we need to explain to the patient how they got there. The causes of spleen chi deficiency, as you know, in TCM, there's only three causes of disease, which I always think is very funny and kind of quirky part of TCM. It's external pathogens, internal emotions, and others. I love the others because it's a big umbrella of a lot of things. So I think it's always very funny. Anyway, for spleen chi deficiency, the causes... One, the first one, the one that I see the most in clinical practice is liver chi stagnation, overacting on spleen. This is a five element pattern, right? 
in the five elements, the wood can control earth, but sometimes it overpower earth, overact, over controls. And that's the case in a lot of practice, which means liberty stagnation, we are tight, we are tense and stress. All this tightens or makes the spleen, the liver chi stagnated and more stress goes and overpowers the spleen, depleting the spleen. So a lot of time when there's adrenal fatigue, I think a lot of people think that adrenal fatigue is a kidney issue. At the beginning, it's always a spleen issue. I know because we think cortisol, adrenals are resting on the kidney. However, in TCM, when we are really fatigued and extremely low in energy, it starts with spleen chi deficiency. And often it could be caused by stress, which is liver chi stagnation, overact and spleen. If you want to know more about fatigue, I have video links in the show notes. You guys can watch the video on fatigue and how to treat fatigue and acupuncture point with it. So that's one of the most common ones. When that's the case, we need to treat the liver tree stagnation, talk to the patient about stress management, and then we can address the spleen tree deficiency. So that's the first cause, which is very common, which is stress. The next cause is worry, overthinking. Those mental health emotions and thinking in the brain that just can't stop chattering and worrying and thinking, that is a spleen tree deficiency. This is kind of like the chicken and the egg. Either the spleen sheet deficiency came first, maybe someone's not eating a good diet and then the diet is not feeding their brain and so they always constantly worry, overthinking, get anxiety. Or the worry, the overthinking come first and depletes the spleen. Which one came first? It's not always easy to know when you treat patients. However, it's great to address as well. The next one is, of course, like we said, because the spleen is in charge of digestion, is diet. Diet is a huge part of lifestyle, and it can create a spleen chi deficiency when there are years of really eating irregular meals at irregular time, eating too fast, depleting or weakening the digestive system with food that is not going to feed the body and the mind properly with real nutrients. So diet, of course, can lead to a lot of issues. When someone has diabetes type 2, usually, often, not always, but the first pattern will be spleen chi deficiency with dampness or phlegm. That is often the case. So that is reversible type 2. Not talking about type 1 is a very different, different disorders in TCM perspective. But it's really important to look at diet as well. So the stress, number one, with liver chi stagnation, overacting on spleen, depleting spleen. The Worrying and overthinking, which one came first, but it's there. And the diet, which we have to address, which we have to talk about to the person. So we're going to talk about food and how to heal spleen chi deficiency with diet, because we have to heal the gut if it's been weakened by many years. That makes sense? So those are the main ones that are going to deplete spleen chi. When it comes to acupuncture point for spleen chi deficiency, we are going to start with the basics. Spleen 3 is the UN source point of spleen. So it has to be there because it's in charge of absorption, digestion. This is the point that is going to help with the digestive system, specifically if it's been weakened for many years, right? The next one is stomach 36 because stomach 36 has to be there. It is the commander point of the digestive system. And it tonifies chi and blood. We want something that's going to tonify qi because the treatment principle for spleen qi deficiency, it is to tonify qi, right, as the basis. Make sense? The next one I would put in there is spleen 6 is also such a great point because it is the crossing point of the spleen meridian, the liver meridian, and the kidney meridian. As we saw earlier, the kidney meridian is the prenatal chi and it gets affected if it's spleen chi deficiency for too long. Liver chi stagnation is often the root cause of a spleen chi deficiency. So it's great to put spleen six to address the kidney, the liver, and the spleen as a whole. So stomach 36, spleen three, spleen six, your basic points. However, you can also put the front mu points of the spleen and the back shoe point of the spleen if you want it to add up. It's up to you in that regard. However, it depends if you're doing a front treatment or back treatment, right? And that's always difficult. In clinical practice, sometimes I ask patients, do you rather face up or face down? Because sometimes patients like it one way or the other better, and I want them to relax. The whole point is to put them in a parasympathetic state so their body can self-regulate and self-heal. Have you gotten your copy of my Acupoint Made Easy book yet? 
If you're a visual person, you're going to love it. I have put my passion for acupuncture into creating a fun, illustrated guide of all acupuncture points with their function, location, depth and angle of insertion, including special points categories, extra points, cupping moxa, and all my years of clinical pearls. You can download the digital version on any device, and it comes with many video links to complement it. Or if you'd prefer the hard copy version like me, you like to look at real books, the publisher ships it all over the world. Before you invest in it, I want to make sure that it is everything you were looking for in a fun guide for acupuncture points. So you can download the sample of all the hard points to see if the format of the book is what you truly were looking for. Listen to what people who invested in Acupoint Made Easy have to say. I adore the book. It has answered so many questions on my mind and is logically and clearly laid out. It was a great investment. That made my day. Absolutely love this. Thank you for thinking outside the box. I have ADD and I'm easily distracted. You made it easy to retain this required information for acupuncture students in different ways for better understanding and memory. You rock. That also made my day because that's the whole point of having creating a book and being on social media and helping support everyone, students and practitioners, because I feel like a lot of us felt lonely when we were on our own. So the internet has provided such a great resource for all of us. Check out the links in the show notes below or go to my website, acuproacademy.com and click the shop tab on the menu bar to invest in your copy today. The basic diet for spleen sheet deficiency has to be really tailored to the person, right? The environment they are in, meaning do they live in Canada, Alaska, or do they live in Arizona or somewhere where it's warmer, right? We have to look at the environment as well as the season. It's very important to look at that. And of course, the person's background, history, et cetera. But for spleen sheet deficiency basics, we want to avoid raw, cold food and cold drinks, like icy drinks, right? We don't need that because it's going to weaken the digestive system. We need to be gentle, kind of like a baby. You know, when babies are pretty young, up until one year old, they obviously have breast milk, but they start to be introduced to food and it's always mushed. It's always, it's never super cold, right? We don't want to give them super cold food. We give them soup and mushed peas and everything that's been really pureed. It's the same with spleen she deficiency. We want to be gentle to the digestive system and give the body a rest. So eating really well as in chewing the food properly and not swallowing fast, having the time to be mindful and eating food that is easy to digest. That's why often it's going to be sweet potatoes, things that are more pureed, yams, eggs, salmon, because it's very easy to digest. You don't have to chew it a lot compared to nuts, for example, which are great if you use nut butter because it's already chewed. But if you're going to chew the nuts, it's probably not going to be the best. Popcorn is really bad because it's really hard to digest. And then it gets into the digestive villi in the colon, in the large intestine that creates more issues. So we want to be really gentle, having a lot of stews and soup and cooked food. It's okay to have fruits that are baked. You could bake a pear with some cinnamon in it. There's a lot of things that we can do, but we really want to avoid the hard, like hard raw broccoli. It's so hard on the speed because it's very hard to digest or hard carrots. That is raw broccoli and raw carrots should not be given to people with spleen tree deficiency. However, cooked one, great mm. idea. Make sense? We want to have food that is warmer. So like cinnamon is great. Ginger is great. Ginger is great because it also dries dampness and it's warm. So the spleen loves that because the spleen has tendency to have excess dampness, as we saw earlier. Make sense? When it comes to Chinese herbal formulas, there are a couple of basic one, classic formulas that are really good for spleen sheet deficiency. It has to be tailored to each person with formula, but let's look at the basics. The first one is Sir John Zetong. So Sir John Zetong, and I'm so sorry, my English pronunciation of Chinese with my French accent is fantastic. So excuse me for that. Sir John Zetong is a main formula for spleen sheet deficiency, specifically when it's affecting the digestive system. So it's a really good formula for that. It's very basic for that. Now, one that I really like is 
Bujong Ichitong. That's one of my favorite formula because it's really good for people that have really chronic fatigue syndrome, that are really exhausted. That exhaustion, that fatigue, mental and physical, and they're exhausted. It also works really well for spinchy sinking, for prolapse of organ, but it's a great basic formula. It's also really good to protect the lung as well, lung and spleen, which are connected as mother and son in the five elements. So I just wanted to talk about the two basic formulas. There are many formulas that we can look at depending on each patient's symptoms, if there is a lot of dampness or phlegm, or it's leading to yang deficiency, etc. I just wanted to stay basic because I like to make it simple, easy to grasp, and fun to learn. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I truly hope you benefited from this episode, and I would love for you to share it with a friend that may benefit from it as well. Follow the show, leave a review, and if you want more, go to my website, acuporacademy.com. I have tons of resources there with treatment protocols, case studies, free courses, and so much more. And connect with me on all social media at Acupro Academy. I'm on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, X, Pinterest, and LinkedIn and TikTok. <laughs> and no matter what, keep rocking it using TCM. Please listen to the disclaimer because the AccuPro Show podcast and material shared through AccuPro Academy, which is a subdivision of Natural Health Sense Incorporated, are designed solely for educational and entertainment purposes. The utilization of information from this podcast or any associated material is at the user's discretion and risk. This content is not meant to replace the guidance of an acupuncturist, Chinese medicine doctor, medical doctor, physician, or any qualified professional, nor is it a substitute for proper diagnosis or treatment. Users are strongly advised not to ignore or postpone seeking medical advice for any existing medical condition with their healthcare professional regarding any health concerns.